Um, all right, I'm going to jump straight in because we're on a time clock. But HAZER, for those of you who are not familiar, stands for Hydrogen and Zero Emissions Research. That was the vision of the company about 17 years ago. That's the reality of the, the company today. We've developed a very disruptive, low emissions hydrogen production technology that is getting very serious attention um, by, um, by a lot of customers in the world today. I'm going to start by setting the context in terms of the market. Today's hydrogen market, for those of you that are not familiar, is about 95 million tonnes per annum. Okay? Um, to put that into context, it's about a quarter of the LNG market. The LNG market is about 400 million tonnes, but the hydrogen market is valued at about uh, $180 billion, whereas the LNG market is valued at about $120 billion. So it's about a quarter of the size but it's significantly larger in terms of value, okay? Hydrogen's used for two things today. A lot of people don't appreciate how big it is. It's every refinery in the world has a hydrogen production facility. Every ammonia and, and fertilizer facility in the world also has a hydrogen production facility associated with it. The problem with it is all of that hydrogen, that 100 million tons, is dirty hydrogen. Every ton of hydrogen produced today is associated with 11 tons, yes, 11 tons of CO2. So it's actually producing more CO2 than it is producing hydrogen. That's the disruption for Hazer. That's the opportunity, but that's the problem for industry. So we're really excited about the space that we fit into. All of that is steam methane reforming, okay? And that's the technology that we're looking to uh, disrupt. So what does Hazer do? Hazer effectively is decarbonizing gas, okay? We take any methane-rich feedstock or gas, biogas, LNG, um, pipeline natural gas, uh, wastewater treatment gas, 25 times more harmful than CO2, and we effectively convert it into, or split it into pure hydrogen and high purity graphite with zero emissions, okay? So we're already beating the existing incumbent technology. The X factor on the, on the company and the intellectual property is the use of a catalyst, an iron ore catalyst. Okay? That drives down the, the process temperature that we operate to significantly lower than all of the other operating processes and, and technologies that are available in the market today. We do this reaction at about 700 to 900 degrees. Everybody else is doing it at north of 1,500 degrees Celsius. That drives out a very low cost hydrogen production uh, process that can be very competitive in the market relative to the incumbent technology today. One technology that serves three very valuable markets. The hydrogen market, growing at 6% per annum. The graphite market, which is also growing at that sort of level, and overall decarbonization, okay? Here's a bit of a snapshot in, in terms of the production technologies. We talked about Hazer, so natural gas feedstock, lots of hydrogen, lots of graphite, low carbon intensity, low energy intensities, available today, commercially viable today. Steam methane reforming, that's the incumbent technology. It just loses on carbon intensity, 10 times the carbon intensity to do what we can do with zero emissions. Okay? Electrolyzers, often referred to as green hydrogen. You've heard lots and lots about green hydrogen. We are not green hydrogen. But green hydrogen takes a huge amount of energy. What green hydrogen does is it splits water relative to splitting gas. It's seven times more energy intensive to split a water molecule relative to splitting a gas molecule. And this is the principal reason why green hydrogen projects are struggling in the market to get commercial viability just purely because of the energy required to split water relative to splitting gas. Okay? We plug in. Think about any refinery, any power station, any LNG facility, um, any steel making uh, process. We plug our technology and drop it in and provide hydrogen at the use point and the demand center for the customer today. Okay, so we don't transport hydrogen around the world. We literally have a process that plugs in and it can provide hydrogen to the customer immediately for use in their facility. Here's the most exciting bit about it, it's the cost picture. Everyone talks about the levelized cost of hydrogen. We can deliver hydrogen to the world for anywhere between 50 cents in the US 
and up to about two to three dollars a kilogram in Asia Pacific. Why the difference? Because the feedstock prices are different around the world. In Asia, gas prices are slightly higher. Even then, we can deliver hydrogen at a very affordable cost for customers, very similar to the cost of the existing feedstock. So that's the willingness to pay is very high. Um, and this drives out very high margins for customers, and it also drives out very attractive economics. And it's one of the principal reasons why a lot of the hard to abate customers are picking up our technology. We've done this for 17 years, okay? So we're not a new technology. We've, been, we've plowed $110 million into developing our technology over 17 years. This is the fifth successful scale up of the tech. It's the commercial demonstration plant. It's sitting in Perth in WA. Um, it is going very well. This is the final phase before we take our technology commercial. Uh, we are effectively demonstrating that our technology works on a continuous basis at an industrial scale. That's what a demonstration plant's about. It's proven tech. It's about now optimizing it and readying it for commercial deployment. You can see that a customer base here. We recently just announced that we've gone through 180 hours of continuous operation. We've got further milestones um, ahead of us and we'll be declaring commercial readiness for the tech um, throughout the year, probably closer to the end of the year. We have a rapidly growing footprint of customers around the world. Um, you can see we've got target markets, North America, Europe, Asia, some of the world's largest. We have had due diligence by all of these groups for the last two or three years on our technology. I like to say we're walking or running and chewing gum at the same time because we're developing a tech, but we've got demand for it that is already there, despite the fact that we're still only TRL 7 going to TRL 9. And that's a beautiful place to be because that means that we're going to accelerate the pathway to revenue for the, for the technology. But you can see the quality of the partners that we're getting. All of them are in hard to abate sectors that are very difficult to electrify, that see value in the decarbonisation potential of Hayes' technology. We've got engineering groups, we've got technology platforms that are also working with us to help us accelerate the tech. More interestingly and probably exciting is behind all this, we've got no fewer than 30 to 35 commercial discussions with prospective customers, strategic partners like engineering firms that can help us accelerate the tech to market, but also strategic investors at the corporate level. I think I'm losing that, yep, corporate level as well as at the project level. So a, a raft of strategic partners and customers that are seeing value in their technology. We just recently inked a deal with a very large gas utility in Canada. Um, this takes us one step closer to um, a very serious um, revenue stream for the company. Fortis BC is two times the size of Origin Energy, okay, so it's a very big gas utility. Uh, that is looking for a solution for refining to, to effectively replace steam methane reforming. We've now got a license fee framework agreed. We have got early access also to revenue, which will start arriving this quarter um, through our engineering service agreement. Uh, and that is a unique opportunity for us to get early access to revenue for a technology that is effectively taking an FID um, in, in 2025. So it's a really exciting project. It's a 25 times scale up on our existing facility. POSCO, you've all heard of POSCO, big company, big industry, massive problem, okay? Steel making is responsible for around 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions or carbon dioxide emissions, okay? Um, POSCO is the sixth largest steel maker in the world. Uh, they've chosen our technology to decarbonize green steel. They're developing a clean steel, low emissions process called Hyrex. Um, we're now jointly developing the integration of our technology into green steel. This is transformational for not just the steel industry, but also Hazer. It's potentially um, a scale that could be up to over 200,000 tonnes per annum of hydrogen demand. So it's a very sustainable long-term partnership that we're very excited about. Um, and as a licensing, uh, as a licensor of a technology, this could be very serious um, cash flow for us in the, in the future. Graphite, the other side of our technology, hydrogen of course, and graphite. We've got a very unique graphite product. It's very high purity. Um, it is um, low ash, low sulfur. It can fit into any steel making facility. There's seven applications for hazer graphite and steel making. Um, water purification, uh, 
carbon black applications like tyre manufacturing, asphalt, bitumen, uh, thermal energy storage, I could go on. Um, but the point is, graphite's a critical mineral, okay? Of the 10 critical minerals that Australia produces today, the one it doesn't produce is graphite, okay? So we're getting a huge amount of inbounds to, pr to develop a graphite, synthetic graphite market for not just the Australian economy, but also global economy. And 90% of the world's graphite comes from China, and they've recent, recently threatened to step on the hose. So this is a growing market. It's a diversified earnings base for us, being hydrogen as well as graphite. So, you know, another potential value kicker for us, up to potentially $1,000 a tonne. Um, for Hazer Graphite. So if you, you know, put that into a, a model, you can see just how much value it can create for Hazer. We're a licensed model. We don't take project level risk. We don't take CapEx risk. We literally license our technology like Microsoft to customers. Okay? That accelerates our access to free cash flow. As we start licensing and collecting license fees at FID and beyond, this is a cash machine that effectively starts throwing off um, you know, large-scale cash as we develop our portfolio throughout the coming um, years. Buckle up, we have a seriously busy 12 months ahead of us. We've got more milestones on the CDP. We're calling commercial readiness by the end of the year. Um, our project in Canada will receive very shortly um, early revenue through our engineering service agreement and we'll finalise the licence terms which will give observers of our company the true underlying value of the technology. And that's what they're looking for and that's what we're going to deliver in terms of the visibility on the scale of this platform. Okay, we're valued at you know, 70 to $80 million today, but if you plug all of these numbers into a model, every plant that we will operate or not operate, but we will sell, could potentially deliver $50 million of underlying NPV to the company. That's what a license model does. So you doesn't, it's not hard maths to say, well, you've got 10 projects. This could easily be a half a billion to a billion dollar platform at scale, okay? Japan, um, there's more milestones there. Again, license terms that will give visibility on valuation. I'd be very disappointed if we don't, haven't converted more of those 30 projects into real commercial agreements again this year. We've got four foundation customers. We've got a bunch of commercial discussions going on. Um, and you know we're looking forward to converting some of those customers to real license agreements. Corporately, um, we're in a very good shape. We've recently raised, so we've got a strong cash position. Uh, we're robustly funded. We've also got line of sight to a fairly sizable R&D rebate. That's my warning. Um, and we have a, a number of um, other non-dilutive inflows ahead of us. We've got more government funding that's announced. Um, we're in the running for some other federal as well as state government uh, grants to support the technology and the growth of our company. So we've got a long runway that's well funded. We've got some significant milestones ahead of us. Our valuation is, is you know, not where we want it to be, but we think that's an opportunity um, uh, for folks to, to invest in the company. It's a compelling investment opportunity. It's, it's differentiated, okay? You've heard lots about hydrogen. We are not green hydrogen. We are a very unique technology that is being picked up by serious customers that have done extensive due diligence on our technology worldwide. And that will continue to grow as we fine tune the technology and ready it for um, commercial deployment throughout the year and into 2025. Thank you.